Do you think that when I talk about body count and I talk about um, guys caring about that, there's a lot of guys that'll, you know, bounce back and say, oh, that's not true. I don't ask. I don't care. Do you still think that the majority of men out there do care about whether a woman has a high body count, whether she's had a promiscuous past? Even if they say they don't care, they do care. And if they don't care, then eventually they'll find out that they should care. It does matter, and the uh, more times a woman engages with a man, she has different expectations. She's not going to be as pure. She's not going to. She's going to have different attitudes, and it's not going to be conducive to a better relationship. The more times that a woman shares her body with a man, the her soul is kind of removed from her body. And I, I, I'm serious. Like no, can, I, I agree with you. you I've can, seen it. I have seen it in women. I know. I know what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. You can look at a girl with a high body count, and she kind of has this blank stare. This. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. and it's just yes. like, whoa! What, what's going? Your soul was something tainted you, yeah. because all these all these guys that lied to her, that faked a relationship, all the times that she pair bonded and then nothing came of it. Something is wrong about that. I don't think it happens to guys as much, but it it, it, it is possible for a guy because then you will have a higher expectation, um, and it's it's a little bit harder to pair bond and you. But for women especially, yes, it does matter. And anybody who denies that is coping. Do you see, like, you're in the dating scene now. I don't know what your dating status is. You don't have to reveal that. But, you know, do you see this level of promiscuity in women when you're out there? Is this the norm? Is it – what? what is it? Because I, I can't believe – I mean, I know I'm kind of a relic, I tell the audience, because I'm, you know, from a different time. But – Women just weren't like this, you know? When I hear these women talking about sex the way they talk about it and being so loose, and forget about the extreme example of an OnlyFans, but even just being like, oh, yeah, you know, I slept with this guy, I don't remember his last name. That was so rare, and those women were kind of marginalized because we were like, oh, God, what a, you know, what a freak. She doesn't care about her own body. Ooh, it was like a bad girl. Like, get her out of, she's out of the club, you know? Even in New York? Even in New York. Now, remember, I'm 20 years older than you. It was in the 90s? You. Like you, you're like in the yes, they were not. Women were, we were watching shows like Beverly Hills 90210 where the first time someone had sex was a big deal. Right. And like, I, I can't, I mean, I didn't I didn't have a boyfriend until I was 19. I'm embarrassed to say, you know, Why sometimes. You but you know what? That's great. I, I didn't. I didn't have a boyfriend until I was 19 and I was, you know, focused on school and whatnot. But I also just didn't want to be part of that scene. And I always say to people, my biggest mistake was because one of the contradictions here is that I did marry late and I did have a baby late. And people say, well, you're preaching all this stuff. And I say, well, first off, I can't say anything was a mistake because I have the most beautiful baby boy and the most amazing husband in the world. So God led me here this way for some reason. But if I could be guaranteed this man and this child, would I have done it sooner? Yes. And my biggest mistake was staying in New York City because what I really wanted was like, you New know, York a City's gentleman. A and I wanted I, I, what got in my ear was not promiscuity. I never had a promiscuous path. I never did that. I never slept with somebody that I didn't care about. I never did any of that crazy stuff, even though people around me were doing it like mad. But I did get in my head about like, you need to be a pro- you need to be a breadwinner. You need to follow the career path. Mm. You need to do all of that. And it really went against my grandma because I wasn't terribly ambitious. I really just liked peace in my life. And I probably, I taught for years. I was a school teacher. I didn't choose ambitious paths. I fell into media by accident, really. But once I got there, I was like, am I supposed to be doing all this climbing and all this? And I fought it, you know, even when I met my husband, I was still fighting it because it wasn't part of my, you know, soul. But it's hard to be in a place like New York and not absorb that pressure as a female. Um, and I saw, oh man, I mean, I'm just curious though, in, in, in your experience dating, is this promiscuity we see on these podcasts, is that, do you see that? Is that happening? Are women that promiscuous? Yeah, I would say the average American girl, her body count is equivalent to her age. Pretty oh much. Oh my God. I yeah. could just vomit. Oh, yeah. where's the button? Yeah, you know about my nasty? I don't. Nasty. Okay, that's me saying nasty, but I coined it. Rolo has it on his, um, what does he have it on? A switchboard? MLD's got it on. Everybody pulled the nasty, but that is nasty no, to me. It, that's pretty much the uh, average girl now. Is Ooh, If she's disgusting. above 18, her body count is probably equal to her age. Yeah. Oh, my God. I can't. I just, oh, wow. Okay. So a lot so. of guys have, have uh, decided to cope with that and just settle with that, even though it's not what they naturally want. Disgusting. But that, that's what it is. I, I read this book recently that was talking about sex in the city, for example. New York City is a giant oh, sign. Yeah. You need to get all, all these women think that they want to be career paths and they're wearing blazers and like, I'm a man too. No one cares. They'll be like, I'm going to a business meeting. <laughs> really? Are you, sweetie? I don't care. I just, like, what? It's a business meeting. They're not happy, though. No, they're it, not happy. It's all cope. They, they really want to raise children and have kids, but they're they've been programmed and 
the truth about Sex in the City and a lot of these magazines from like the early 2000s, the truth is these women who were promoting this and selling this, they were happily married at home and they knew what they were doing. That's right. Sex in the City turned an entire generation of New York women into whores who wanted to have careers, who were getting SCDs, who were running around, I'm independent, and then they yep. become childless Chelsea Handler people at like 45, and they're like, what? Why did I Why did I buy into this? Who told me this? It was shows like Sex and the City, it was the books they were reading, mm -hmm. it was all these cosmo Cosmopolitan magazine mm -hmm. selling this lifestyle of being an independent, like, city-going whore. Like, it, that, those shows promote that, and it's like fun to watch, whatever. You watch, I watched like one episode of My Ex-Girlfriend, we're just watching the show, and you just, you know, really? This is, they're all in their 30s just running around dating. I know. It's, it's, so, it's sad. It's very sad. It's a very, very hollow, empty life. Yeah. And they market it as if it's cool and as if it's what you're supposed to be doing. But in reality, it was made by people who are happily married at home, mm -hmm. laughing at all the damage that they're doing. It's and a You know, I think my generation of women were brainwashed and really did have a maternal instinct that, you know, society, you know, New York City, these woke cities were trying to, you know, compress. Oh, no, this isn't what you want you know, wreck this and go and, you know, spend your time buried in a cubicle somewhere. But this current generation of women, there's too many of them that read as dead inside to me. Like, it doesn't seem like their instinct is intact anymore. They no longer want to be maternal. It's like it's been beaten out of them for like two extra decades now since I was young. And they don't want it anymore. They're increasingly selfish. They're, I don't need a man. They're, they're disconnected from their womb, I say, in a, in a frightening way where they, they know they're not saying, oh, you know, I don't, I don't need a man because they've been programmed. They're saying it because they actually feel that way now because they're changed. These women are a different breed, I feel like, than the ones that were initially brainwashed by the sex in the city. I don't know if you feel that way. You encounter them much more than I do now, but they read as dead inside in many respects. There's a lot of people who just say Western women are not even real. Like, they don't even exist. <laughs> when you go out and travel the world, you're like, hey, well, what about American girls? <laughs> just straight up tell me, American girls aren't real. Mm. They're, they're not, they don't even exist. They're not allowed here. Their souls are too corrupted. There's no point it's in sad. even engaging with them. It's over. It's very sad. It wasn't always like that. I mean, right. I can tell you even just when I was younger, it was not like that. If you like the short clip and want to watch the full episode, click here. And if you want to connect with me one-on-one -on, -one on Manect, you're going to click right here. Let's get to talking.